Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here for today's video. We are going to be going down the brief rabbit hole regarding cold brew coffee and trying to answer from science that is just out there for free download on the internet how much caffeine cold brew coffee actually contains. Cold brew is my latest uh, culinary fascination. This is the end of my daily cold brew batch, but I learned the hard way very quickly that this stuff can really, really pack a high caffeine content. I ended up drinking the batch of cold brew I made for the day and saying, oh, this is pretty good. I'll just have a small bit more. And boom, massive panic attack. It was horrible. It was the first time, and I've been drinking coffee every day for more years than I can remember. It was the first time I've had a panic attack from caffeine in potentially ever probably not but for a very long time and it really caught me off guard so i found some really interesting science on google regarding how much caffeine there is in cold brew coffee lots of people make guesses on youtube and in recipes and i think it's better to just sort of look to people that have actually measured this stuff in a lab so this is i did another video where i looked at a few different uh papers i came across on google scholar but this in my opinion is the best one and it's also completely free uh the paper that i'm going to show you can just get it as a pdf from the internet so here is my presentation of its findings be aware or a disclaimer i'm not the author of this research i'm only presenting this for entertainment purposes do not rely upon it for your caffeination planning or lack thereof okay so this is the paper i'm just going to move myself over to this side so you can see everything on my screen here it's called the effect of time roasting temperature and grind size on caffeine and chlorogenic acid concentrations in cold brew coffee and it was published in scientific reports as by uh, two researchers megan fuller and nini z rao so I basically found this by, you know, putting cold brew coffee into Google Scholar. And they do say in the introduction to this paper that like there is almost no research or there was almost no research regarding the caffeine concentration in cold brew before they came along. Uh, so I'll put a link to it on the video description. And as I mentioned there, uh, you can actually get the full text PDF of this just by downloading this. This is what it looks like. It's a nicely designed paper with loads of uh, interesting info. And as I mentioned, I'll pop a link to that in the video description. So basically, okay, here's how they did this experiment. They got coffee from regular commercial sources and they quantified the caffeine of four different types of coffee. The first one was a medium roast. So you can see they've noted here, this is the roast and this is the grind size. So firstly, a medium roast. Uh, with a medium grind size, then a medium roast with a coarse grind, then a dark roast with a medium uh, grind size, and finally a dark roast with a coarse grind size. So those are the four uh, variables. Now, it's really important, they didn't actually really emphasize this in the paper, but they cold brewed at room temperature right at the end of this paper under the methods section. They say the cold brewing process was carried out at room temperature, ranging from 21 to 25 degrees, so like pretty standard ambient room temperature and adapted from a home brewing recipe suggest suggested by the New York Times. Regarding how they measured caffeine, uh, this is all the detail. I don't really understand it, but I trust that they measured it scientifically using some sort of a liquid chromatography system, HPLC. All right, now here's where here's where the the juicy stuff or the interesting parts of their findings are to be found. This is one of the first figures in the paper. It's called caffeine concentration over time. Now, what we're looking at is the four different types of coffee that I mentioned, and we can see that the um, light light orange dot, this one, the medium roast coarse grind, actually had the most caffeine, and then the dark roast coarse grind had the two dark roasts are the yellow triangles and the green triangles and that's actually kind of to be expected because from what i've read before typically your dark roasts have less caffeine content because as you continue the roasting process you're roasting away or you're cooking away a little bit of the caffeine content in the beans so this is bared out by this chart we can see that the dark uh, the dark roasts have less caffeine and the medium roasts have more caffeine and it's the coarse grind 
that actually has more caffeine than the medium grind which actually i find really interesting to me because you know if we're talking about the surface area as you uh, as you go towards a finer grind you're increasing the surface area but they found that the coarse grind actually had more caffeine slightly than the medium grind so here's kind of the way i suggested looking at this now everyone can interpret this graph in their own way but to me it looks like about this point where i put the red line and that's after about 600 minutes um where they describe it as approaching steady state in other words the caffeine content they're remember they're doing this at room temperature so they're leaving out their caffeine their cold brew uh four vats of them in wherever they did this research and then they're periodically measuring them using chromatography and what it seems like to me is that you can see there's kind of this like steep increase in the caffeine concentration over the first they say 180 minutes which looks about right to me that would obviously be three hours then from 180 to 360 uh, and 360 minutes is six hours so then for the next three hours the curve is flattening and it's coming up less and then from they this is where they drew a line in the research it's at 360 you can see there that the medium roast coarse grind is still edging up slightly in fact most of the lines are still trending up slightly for me it's a kind of like 600 i would say 600 minutes that it looks like if you look at this dot here and this dot here where i've done the second red line on the right there is almost no difference so after 600 minutes or 10 hours of cold brewing basically you're not getting any more caffeine out of the quantity of coffee that you're immersing and um, between 360 which is six hours and 600 minutes which is 10 hours so between six and 10 hours the 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 rate of increased caffeine content is becoming negligible basically so that's quite interesting a lot of recipes i've seen talk about you know we should you should cold brew for 24 hours because after 12 hours we're gonna there's still lots of caffeine in the in the bean and uh this is basically saying that is not the case at all after 10 after just 10 hours so you know a 12 hour infusion there's pretty much you're going to, you're going to be getting it's diminishing returns on steroids or maybe on caffeine would be a better way of describing it you're getting a lot less so this is how they actually described this the researchers um in all coffee sampled, fast initial extraction was seen over the first 180 minutes with a slower rate of extraction after 180 minutes. This analysis concluded that extraction times greater than 400 minutes, and again, it really depends what you view as significant increases to make this determination, but they put it at 600 minutes, which I'm just going to jump back here for a second. So 600, sorry, 400 minutes would be approximately, I guess, this is here where they've drawn the red line 300 400 500 600 yeah this is what the broken uh, line represents here 400 minutes after 400 400 minutes 6.67 hours do little to increase the caffeine concentration of the resulting coffee so really this is my sort of overlay on their chart i suggest that, i suggest that you can look at this in terms of four straight four stages phase one being the first 180 minutes of fast caffeine extraction phase two between 180 and 360 minutes being slower extraction the curve is flattening phase three between uh six hours and 10 hours we're almost at steady state negligible uh increase in caffeine and from 10 hours on it's almost as good as steady state it looks to me now they didn't include all their data raw data in this uh, paper but it looks to me as if between this orange dot uh just under caffeine the word caffeine and this orange dot over time it looks to me like there's actually no increase in caffeine at all so the way they sum this sum this up is that um coarse grain samples both medium and dark roast showed a considerable deviation in caffeine concentration between hot and cold brew extractions in both samples, a cold brew coffee was found to have the higher concentration of caffeine. Medium grain samples also showed higher concentrations of caffeine in cold brew extraction. However, the difference was not statistically significant. So I just kind of pulled these out of the paper again to make this more obvious. Coarse grain has more caffeine when cold brewed. So what you're looking at here, as you can see, is on the right, 
the two graphs to the right this is coarse grind and the two graphs to the left are medium grind and the blue circles and the orange triangles are the cold brew and the hot brew is the hot brew caffeine line is the straight line with that kind of orangey color now what's interesting the hot brew caffeine line is steady right all the caffeine is extracted pretty much instantaneously and it doesn't change over time or that's how they're depicting it but we can see that the cold brew is increasing over time up to again about that 600 minute or 10 hour point at which point the increase is very modest and using the medium grind we do end up with the cold brew caffeine a tiny bit above the uh, hot caffeine the hot brew caffeine line and um, I'm actually just going to turn on my cursor and wave it around so I can show exactly what I'm pointing to I'm circling my cursor there right this is the dark roast medium grind we can see that the caffeine content is uh, slightly more and waving my uh, cursor again here medium roast medium grind we can see it's again slightly above but uh, dark roast the two coarse grind medium and dark roast the difference above the hot brew caffeine line in orange is significant we're looking at a difference of between about 1000 milligrams of caffeine per liter and 1200 so that's about 20 percent more versus we're looking here at about kind of 100 i would say 1100 1150 is approximately where that is so smaller so in other words it's the difference is more substantial for a uh, coarse grind and i'm going to go ahead now and turn off my cursor so for medium medium grind cold versus hot brew as i mentioned but just to blow this up to make it a bit easier to see looking at the uh the orange the orange stuff which is the caffeine and the triangle is a cold brew and the steady state line is hot brew we end up with a tiny bit more caffeine after uh, this period here but it's not it's not a very very much whereas medium roast once we get past about the kind of it's actually at about 300 minutes uh 300 minutes which is five hours that we're starting to see for uh coarse grind we're starting to see significantly more caffeine than using conventional hot brewing this is the data just uh you know sort of actually tabulated here are some of the key data points uh, and I've added arrows to kind of draw your attention to cold brew versus hot brew. And what we can see again is that with the uh, coarse grinds we are seeing, and this is this rows two and four, we're seeing significantly more caffeine. And the medium, sorry, the, yes, the medium grind rows one and three, we are seeing more 1180 and 1080 versus 1040 and 1060 but it's not a they they deemed it not to be a statistically significant difference again this is the, the where they regard that their increased caffeination is negligible uh they said they they regard that as being at 400 minutes after 600 minutes it's for sure very negligible uh versus 24 hours and we can see again that the caffeine concentration across all four samples was really not significantly different so basically after seven hours to 10 hours certainly after 10 hours but mostly after seven hours you're really barely increasing the caffeine concentration in your cold brew uh, coffee so these aren't the findings from the paper these are just what i'm suggesting to be the findings cold brew for more than 10 hours and really six if you're not if we're, if we're not nitpicking doesn't do much to increase the caffeine concentration of the finished beverage naturally the concentration of other flavor giving compounds may rise over this period but the concentration of caffeine peaks at about 10 hours using a coarse grind cold brew has significantly more caffeine than hot brewing to me it looked like about 20 percent but if anyone wants to read this paper and crunch those numbers uh they are welcome to do so using a coarse grind cold brew has significantly more caffeine than hot brewing however the difference when a medium grind size is reached is not statistically significant but the caffeine content is still the same as hot brewing in fact it's a little bit greater if i go back to this for a second we can see that the uh the caffeine concentration is indeed sorry it was the, the previous previous slide here we go um the medium 
is 1 and 3. So we're seeing 1180 and 1080 versus 10, 1040 and 1060. So there still is still more caffeine even when we're just looking at the medium roast. And uh, that's it, guys. So basically, if you are cold brewing and you want to control the uh, the caffeine, so you want to get sort of a good quantity of caffeine out, but not too much, um, I'm personally now cold brewing for 12 hours. And if you uh, do want to sort of get significantly more caffeine, uh, from it about 20% more than hot brewing you can opt for a coarse grind or you can flip this flip this logic on its head and say that in order to not produce an overly caffeinated batch it's actually better to go with a medium grind size so that for the same quantity of beans whether you're using them hot or cold they're going to be pretty similar if you're into cold brewing hope this run through of the caffeine was interesting of course i'm just presenting the research that is out there on the internet i'll put a link in the description thank you guys for watching if you do want to get more videos from me on this and other subjects do consider subscribing to this youtube channel